Thanks so much, Lynn, for opening those beautiful garden gates for us. Uh, especially love your bowling ball path. Well, right now we're going to be turning our attention to a plant that has many different kinds of uses here in Central Texas, uh, the palms. And I'm joined by Jeff Yarbrough from Leaf Landscape Supply, formerly the Emerald Garden. It's great to have you back on the program, Jeff. Thank you. I like coming. Yeah, well, it's great. And uh, palms are, there. there's really a palm for every, almost every situation, sun, shade, rocky soil, or deep, rich soil, right? Yeah, palms pretty much grow everywhere you want, sun, shade, indoors, you name it. Sorry, right, the, the big restraining thing on palms has to do with cold, right? That's the big thing people need to be aware of. Right, in Austin, you really have to look at cold hardiness on palms. There, there are quite a few that just aren't hardy here, but there are quite a few that do quite well. Okay, so that's the, those are the big conditions, you know, be aware of the cold hardiness of the plant and make sure that you have one that's for the sun or the shade. There's another thing that you were talking about before the program I want to learn a little bit more about that I didn't know that palms uh, depended on micro microbial uh, kind of allies in the soil. Yes, it's a beneficial fungi that um, inhabits the uh, outer level areas, areas of the root system mm -hmm. and allows palms to uptake water more efficiently. The uh, mm -hmm. fungi uh, gathers the water and the palms absorb it. All right, well, good to know that. There are a lot of plants that have that kind of symbiotic relationship with, yes. the, with the fungi, so this is something that can help uh, the growers out. Now, we're going to start by talking about a, kind of a classic Austin palm, one that's been used here for many generations, and it's the windmill palm. This is one that gets tall, um, often with a very funky base. Windmill palms are definitely one of the most common ones. They're used around swimming pools a lot because yeah. they're clean. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have any spines or sharp points on them, so, mm -hmm. so a very friendly palm. Yeah, friendly palm can get quite tall, can get 30, 40 feet tall. They grow straight up and uh, can get quite large trunks on them, yes, yeah. very tall. But when, when I said funky trunk, um, they're often narrower at the base than they are at the top, which it look, kind of looks like a baseball bat. <laughs> the the healthier the condition, the definitely the thicker the trunk will get as it matures, yeah. yeah well, anyway, it's, it's an interesting plant and one that uh, likes the full sun and that grows well in, in a, a wide range of Austin soils. Yeah. We, we recommend recommended for all over town. It's um, hardy well below 15 degrees. Mm -hmm. um, not often do we see freeze damage on a, on a windmill palm. It's, it's a good plant and like I said one that's been used for generations here. Um, you, we have also a plant that you brought that is a native of Florida. This is a cycad. Um, that I'm not familiar with. I know it's in the Zamia family. Tell me a little bit about this one. Um, the Florida Kunti is a, a good hardy cycad. It's a Zamia genus. Um, <laughs> they're a zone 8B, so a lot of areas in Austin, they are winter hardy. Mm -hmm. um, they do quite well underneath trees. They also make a nice house plant. Um, it's a short, um, glossy, uh, bushy palm that gets about three to four feet tall and about three to four feet wide. Yeah. I like the look of it. it, it it's got a broader leaf than the sago palm, which is a close relative, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, very clumped, um, very dense uh, uh, growth habit. And this is one that would do well, I would think, in mass plantings or as an accent plant in shady situations, right? They're used quite a bit as a mass planting. So uh, imagine a mounding shrub like a, um, a yop, dwarf yopon holly. They would give you that effect, mm -hmm. but in a shaded environment. All right. Well, I think it's a very attractive cycad. I like it a lot. Very and, pretty. And it's a, nice to have a little variant from the sagos. Absolutely. But speaking of sagos, you brought one of those as well. And of course, this is one that is very commonly used here in central Texas and uh, is a great plant for shade as well. Excellent for shade. They grow in sun. They, uh, they're slow growing, but they're, they're extremely hardy. Mm -hmm. um, uh, many winters, they lose their leaves, but you cut them off and they come back out again. Yeah, yeah. it's a very dependable uh, cycad for us here in central yes. Texas. It's the one cycad that most everybody knows, I think, really. Right. Um, and this is one I, I find does pretty well in rocky soils. It uh, likes drainage and most palms do like to mm -hmm. be on the well-drained side. So yes, it grows mm -hmm. uh, well in rock. Well, next to that one is one of my all-time favorites. This is a Texas native. It's Sable Miner. Mm -hmm. I love the Sable Miners. 
Sable miners are, are native and uh, starting, um, let's see, there's a Palmetto State Park, of so course, there's a lot right. of them growing Not there. Far from here. And uh, they, they make a nice uh, under tree, understory palm mm -hmm. that can take a little bit of sun and get a little bit bigger than a zamia, about four to five feet um, yeah, mature. A dramatic spike, but no trunk. No trunk. They've got uh, the leaves all emerging from pretty much at the soil level. Right. And, um, um, but they can make a pretty massive clump given time. Yeah, and, the, and when I said the spike, it has that kind of a wonderful kind of uh, sculptural form in the landscape, right. uh, and I, I find it very appealing. I, I, this, again, one of my all-time favorites, and there are a couple of other full-size palms or trunked palms that are uh, sables that are native to Texas as well, but the sable miner is the most commonly available one. Yes. Now we have across the way here um, an, another palm. This is the needle palm. Tell me a little bit about this. This is one that could be indoors or out, right? Indoors or out. It's uh, another uh, native to the U.S., mm -hmm. Florida, and Southeast uh, uh, United States. It's um, it's noted to be one of the hardiest of the uh, the U.S. palms. Mm -hmm. um, it's even zoned to 6B zone, which um, I haven't experienced that, but that's very cold. Yeah, 6B is, is chilly for right. a palm, right. so uh, that's impressive. Now, uh, speaking of cold hardy, the Mediterranean palms are, are pretty darn cold hardy, and, and they've been used here in, in Central Texas for a long time. You've brought a silver variety of the Mediterranean fan palm. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this one. Well, the silver is a little more refined foliage, um, a little um, thinner and lacier cut. Mm -hmm. It is slower growing than the green version, um, mm -hmm. but very desirable because of the silver blue cast. Yeah, it's a very um, attractive. In full sun, it'll get very nice and blue. Well, it, it's super attractive. A clumping palm doesn't develop a main trunk. It has multiple tr small trunks, right? Multiple small trunks, rather slow growing. Um, uh, they can get large with age, but, but great age. It takes them a long time. It does take a long time. But again, very cold hardy and a very adaptable plant. Yes. Now, the pindo palm is one that, again, looks to me like a houseplant. <laughs> yeah. Pindo palm really does look, um, it's the hardiest of the... Um, of what you would call the the weeping or pinnate type right. palms, and it uh, does quite well here. I've I've seen one take minor damage in 15 years in Dripping Springs. Um, That's impressive. They, uh, country. And, and, yeah, just a little bit of damage on mm -hmm. one spike coming out of the top one winter. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, it's the one here that does produce edible fruit, and a lot of people make jelly and wine and, and, jelly, and eat the yeah. fruit right off the plant. All right, well, there you go. It's, it is a beautiful, I love the graceful form of this one. They make a massive palm too. They'll be 15 foot wide and 15 foot tall um, and then gradually grow a trunk. And it's a very dramatic plant. Now, speaking of drama, behind it we have a king palm, a very stately looking plant. King palms are real nice. They're typically just an indoor palm used in a large uh, lobby or, or a high vaulted ceiling. Um, they have the very clean trunk and many times an arching trunk and have a very um, architectural look. Yeah, it's a, it's a very striking plant. And uh, again, this is one that could grow in a big indoor space yes. or uh, a very sheltered outdoor space, I would yes, say. Yes, very sheltered, yeah. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, we have another one that you brought in here with you. This is called the Lady Palm. And tell me a little bit about this. This is a, I've seen sold as house plants, but does it well? Does it do well in the ground here? Lady palm is really an 8B zone palm, so it, it is hardy in a lot of areas in Austin. Okay, it, uh, central part of town. Central part of town, uh, central South Austin, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. It's um, very slow growing. It'll take years to get to four feet. They mm -hmm. um, they prefer deep shade. Um, any direct sun can actually damage the foliage a little bit. Right. So it makes an ideal indoor palm for almost any lighting mm -hmm. and an excellent shade palm for outdoors. We're running out of time and I want to give people a sense of what the water requirements are generally for these plants. Now with the cycads, once they're established, they can go dry for a long time. Correct. And most all of your palms will tolerate um, extreme drought, but not um, grow the way you would want them to. So, so regular irrigation, but uh, good drainage and allowed to dry between waterings is your best okay. care. And deer tend not to like the cycads, but the rest? Pretty much all your palms are going to be mostly deer resistant. Okay. Um, for the, uh, I don't think any of them are going to be tasty. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you never know with the deer. You never know. All right. Well, Jeff, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming back on. Jeff Yarbrough with Leaf Landscape Supply. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. All right. And coming up next, it's Stephanie.